So the big question is this, how do most agents who struggle to get the information that most successful agents hoard to themselves grow and prosper without this information? That's the big question and this video cast is the answer. Welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. I'm your host, Pat Hyben. Okay, Rockstar Nation, I got a great uh, returning guest coming out of San Diego, California. Mr. Mark Patterson is on the line, and uh, man, he, he had a very, very popular episode prior uh, when he disclosed his profit margin was 46%, which is unheard of in, in this game, especially not unheard of in the game, but it's, let's just say very admirable in today's market where a lot of agents are buying leads and spending a lot of money, um, spending more money than normal and, and making their profit margins get lower. So um, uh, a few things have changed since he came on last. Came on last, it was episode 608, uh, over 100 episodes ago. So I wanted to catch up with him and see how he's doing because, you know, essentially he was a solo agent for much of his career and he started building his team. I want to see what, uh, what has changed and how life has been uh, since the last episode. So, Mark, welcome back to Real Estate Rockstars. Thanks for having me, Pat. So, yeah, things have definitely changed. Profitability has gone down, so it's not as amazing as it was. Um, when I last spoke to you, I was actually sitting in my kitchen because I did not have an office space. Uh, we were with a company that didn't have like a, a head office. So you kind of work from home. So I did, I was running my team out of my kitchen and now it's official since January. I've had an office space and um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm big time now. So we have a, a storefront. Um, I, I did start buying leads, which that is something I wanted to talk about is I definitely lost some profitability with that um, by buying Zillow and Rotor.com, Facebook, pay-per-click, all that good stuff. And uh, you lose some money in the middle of that. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at currently, figuring, figuring things out again. Wow. I love it. Well, always a challenge uh, in life, and that it, it wouldn't be fun without it. But let's let's talk about your numbers. So, how many houses have you sold in the last twelve months? One hundred and one. So I just passed my hundred mark. Uh, I mean, my uh, I'm, I just started my. Um, I think it's been like three and a half years in real estate. So this is definitely the most homes I've ever sold. My average Which, price. You went from seventy homes to one hundred and one. All right. Yes. So what, what was your what was your ECI on that? As we like to say, Mark, your ego commission income on the 101 homes. On 101 homes, I'm uh, so far at I would say about 400,000 um, in in my income for this year. What is that? But, the gross, like um, that? You, that yeah, you that'd be, um, I could do the math. I have, I use CTE to track everything. What's so CTE? It's called um, continuing excellence. So oh, okay. CTE.biz, I believe, is their website, but they're um, really good with just being able to track all your numbers. So those 101 homes were the, tw uh, the last 12 months. So, but year to date, this gives you a little bit better idea. So year to date, I've done 84 closed and 19 pending. Um, That's so I'm at, yeah, so I'm at 606, 605, I'm sorry, 105, um, 105 homes closed and pending uh, just year to date. But year to, you know, closed from uh, 12 months ago, I have 101 closed. Okay. And so, like, what, um, what about gross income? What do you think that's going to end up at? The gross, right? Like the total commitment before you pay your broker, before you, you pay yeah, for yeah, Zillow, yeah. before anything. Right now, I'm at 1.4. 1 $1.4 million. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And what's your profit margin now? Right now, I have uh, net um, 587. So, 587. Okay. Yeah. So, you before, before taxes. Right. So, let's say 600. So, that would be, you know, 750. Yeah, you're still in the, well, okay. So, 10% would be 140 grand off of 1.4 million. So, um, you said you're at 460. 
Yeah, that would be uh, so about thirty right percent. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's definitely dropped, but it's still it's still a profitable business compared to what I've seen from other teams. Yeah, but, I mean, you still make four hundred thousand dollars a year on your tax return. So what, what? Um, okay, so what's changed? Let's talk about that. And and I guess the the question, like, um, when you okay, so here's a great question. So when you when you sold um, seventy homes. Or, or less than that, or around there, and you were a solo agent versus now as a team, right, where your profit margin has dropped, uh, what was the highest you ever netted? Do you know? Like, um, um, oh, definitely. This is, this is going to be my best year. So last year, I probably made 300. I'm about to do my taxes. I have, my accountant told me I have till the 15th. So, so I'm going to do my 27 taxes. <laughs> He actually said, you better send me your stuff today. <laughs> so uh, I don't know what my net was from last year, um, but I would say it was probably about 400. Okay. So this year it's, this year it's more of, uh, we're definitely selling more homes. The percentage of profitability is lower, but obviously with, with more homes sold, you get more money. Wow. Wow. Even though your gross profit proportionately, um, you know, went up and your, your profit margin went down, um, the your your net numbers are up, right? You're going from 300 yeah. to probably close to 400 thousand this year. Um, tell me what you did uh, to make that extra 100 G's, because that's you know that's not chump change. And I mean, and everybody wants it. What came with that? Um, tell me what you've done in the last year. So definitely, I think we've we fine tuned our systems. So whenever you have agents, agents want accountability. And I think a lot of team leaders want to hold their agents accountable, but they don't have the time to do so. So you got to set systems in place that'll make these agents stay accountable. One way that we do it is through a point system. So we uh, assign points to each agent and we rank them every single week on their quartile. So if you're a great agent and you've done everything you're supposed to be doing, you're following up with leads, you're not behind on any task, you're considered a Q1 agent on my team. If you're selling maybe um, two homes a month and you're doing good but not great, so two homes a month in San Diego, that's a good agent, um, then they're Q2. If you're selling one home a month, you're considered Q3. And if you're on one home every other couple months, then you're a Q4 agent. Now, okay, the so, uh, so slow this down because everyone's like, what the hell are you talking about? So, so <laughs> okay, so what's Q stand for? Quartile. And so we rank them in four quartiles. Four quartiles. And what's the best quartile? Quartile four? Q1. Nope. Q1, Q1 is the best. Q1 is the best. And then yep. what, and, 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 and Q1, what are the requirements again? I know so you said them. If you're, doing, um, if you're doing three or more deals a year, I'm sorry, three or more deals a month, and that is uh, you know, an active listing that you put on the market, a pending, um, and a, a close. Like if you have those three going for you, then you're a Q1. Okay. And in San Diego, measure it to however your city is. If it's normal for your city for someone to close 40 deals a year, in San Diego, if you close 40 deals a year, you're, you're probably not going to want to be on my team. You'll probably go and do your own thing. But if you're closing 24 to 30 deals a year, you're definitely one of my top agents. And right now we have four of those. Um, so we have four people in Q1. And what that means is that when we go to do lead shifts, because everything that we do is kind of based on leads and incentive. Um, we let them pick first. So I've got one girl on my team. She's consistently at the top. She follows all the rules. She does all the stuff. She's a culture fit. She does all of the tasks assigned to her when she gets a lead. Um, she nurtures them properly. She doesn't follow behind. And so therefore, when we have leads to sign up for, because we do them on kind of like floor time, like the old days at the office, you'd get your yeah. floor. Shift. We do lead time. So we do lead shift time, eight to 11, 11 to two and two to five. So it's three different lead shifts per day. They get to sign up. So she gets to go first and pick her spot she wants. And does she have to physically be at the office? Yep. So she has to physically be there. So if and she shows up, if she, I mean, do you track like all the, do you track like response time on leads, uh, yep. all that stuff? We track everything. So speed to lead tends to be less than five seconds. So when people say like, oh, you know, I didn't call them for the first five minutes. Like if you, if you waited longer than 30 seconds in San Diego, see you later. So we see a huge, fat, like uh, if, if someone who's an amazing person on the phone answers the phone first, 
the chance of that person buying from our team is so much higher than someone, you know, average answering the phone and then passing it off to someone. So we always let our best agents answer the phones first. So they have the, the first spots. Um, there's only what five, three shifts a day and five days a week that we do the shifts. So there's only 15 shifts. So by the end of the week, usually if you're not in Q1 in that quartile one, you usually don't get any leads. Now Q2 <laughs> agents, there's two Q2 agents this week got leads because the first girl on our team, she was behind on her leads. And then so she had overdue task. Okay, so if so you have wait, overdue tasks, slow, I mean- Let's you, slow this down a little bit. So how do you know that they're behind on their leads? And what does that mean? My, my CRM allows me to check accountability. So it'll allow me to say is every single one of their leads needs to have a task set up and their tasks are due on certain days. So if they have overdue task, it'll show on my CRM, this person has 43 overdue task. Well, if you have 43 overdue task, why am I going to give you 12 new brand new leads? You can't even keep up with the ones that you have. So as long as they're kept up with their tasks, so I just have a simple dashboard on my CRM that allows me to monitor everyone. And their tasks are like, call this person back, call this person yep. back. What, yeah. yeah, nurtures. I mean, because what, what CRM are you using for that? We use FirePoint. So FirePoint. FirePoint yeah, FirePoint's awesome. It's kind of a, it's an IDX, so it's kind of your simple Boomtown, your Commissions Inc. I've used those as well, but I just like FirePoint. It's more affordable. Okay, so talk to me about that. So why do you, why, why do you choose, if you've used Commissions Inc. and you use Boomtown, uh, what are the benefits? Economically, is it cheaper? Is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, cheaper does all the same things, and I have not had as many glitches as those other two. I'm not trying to talk bad about it either of those systems. It's just what I found. What's it cost? Uh, nine fifty for up to 50 users. Hmm. And, so. um, and then um, with FirePoint, was it hard to, cause a lot of people won't, uh, you know, are afraid to change out of Boomtown or afraid to change out of commissions thing because they're afraid they're going to lose all the leads and all the information already in that. Tell me about that. Uh, when I switched from Commissions Inc. to FirePoint, they actually went in. I believe I had to reset up searches, um, but my agents did it, and they were on board because we were getting a few glitches, and it was kind of becoming an issue. So we actually, uh, I think all the stuff was completely transferred easily. The, the company did that for us. FirePoint did. But we did have to go in and manually create their searches again. And maybe, maybe, um, maybe that's a good thing because it gets all your agents to – to think about it, right? To think about, yeah. you know. All right. Well, that that that's interesting. That's good to know. So nine fifty a month, um, and a lot of them uh, obviously are anywhere between, you know, a thousand and two thousand um, dollars, and they want the lender to pay a portion of that. Uh, um, and then now, are you paying for you know SEO on top of that nine fifty or or? Yes. Yeah, so we do, uh, I don't do pay-per-click SEO, but I do Facebook ads. So I have someone else manage my Facebook ads, but like I was talking about the lead shifts. So if Ali were on lead shift or Josh or Marianne and a lead came in and Marianne's on from eight to 11 AM, if the lead comes in at eight Oh one, it goes into her CRM and it pings her phone. So she knows a new lead came in, whether it's a Facebook lead, a Zillow lead or a realtor.com lead, it would go into her CRM. She would reach out to that person while she's on lead shift. Um, and then at 11 o'clock, the next person, whoever's on it, it auto goes into their name. So it's all set up on the back end on FirePoint. That's Makes beautiful. It, what do yeah. you, what do you like best right now? Realtor, Zillow, or Facebook? Realtor. Why? So my ROI on Realtor is like is 700%. My ROI on Zillow is like 105. It's like very minimal. So the amount of money I'm spending on Zillow, the cost per lead just got astronomical. They're changing in my area next week to the new Zillow platform um, where they're doing only live transfers and we'll see how that goes. But right now, um, I'm throwing all my money to realtor.com. And, and it, you, it, you know, are you finding this the quality of leads is a lot better or, or is it just more leads or what? Yeah, it's, uh, well, one cost per lead is so much less. So on realtor.com in my city, it's about a third of the price for the same lead as it is with Zillow. For the so same right, lead. Okay, so for the same I mean, lead, well, same quality lead, maybe yeah, even the same person. My price went actually higher on, on Realtor.com by like $50,000. So I don't know why, but my Realtor.com price point is higher average. We just I, put I, a I hear that a lot. I hear that a lot, yeah. Actually, you can see the building behind me, those two twin towers. Yeah. 
We just put one of them into escrow for two point two million off of a realtor.com lead. It closes. What a condo inside there. Yep. So that will help our ROI. But we've had quite a few heavy hitters on. Uh, yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Realtor.com. So um, we definitely. I'm spending about ten grand now a month on realtor.com. On Zillow, I'm spending fifteen, and we've closed fourteen on both platforms this year. Okay, ten grand a month on realtor.com, and you're spending fifteen on Zillow. Yep. And, what, and we've had the same get, number of closings. What are you going to do? And how much on Facebook? Facebook is 4000 a month. So how are you going to change that? I'm going to cancel Zillow. You're going to and cancel 15 grand, 180 grand a year. I mean, that, you, they're going to be pissed. Amazing read for agents who want to blow their business up. Six Steps to Seven Figures was an amazing read. Pat breaks it down into simple, actionable steps that if taken will almost guarantee seven-figure success in the real estate sales business. Couldn't recommend this enough. Wow. Thank you for the awesome Amazon review, Garo215. Now, do you want to get your hands on this book for free and blow your business up? Here's how. Go to free six steps book.com. That's free S I X steps book.com right now, or simply text the word Pat to four, 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 nine, nine, nine. That's text Pat to four, 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 nine, nine, nine. And I'll send you a free book. I just was at Zillow too. Compliments of Zillow up at a uh, Paseo Hotel in Huntington. Great event. I just um, the ROI is not there for me. Their cost per lead has become astronomical. You hear people saying, "Oh, on Zillow in 2013," which I wasn't even an agent then. But they're talking about how their numbers were just so amazing and how it just kind of kept dwindling. And so the cost per lead on Zillow is $311 a lead. I can't pay that. I mean, I'm basically giving them 100 grand to make 105 grand. Freaking doesn't make sense. Well, that's that's the industry standard. Actually, is is wow. right. It's like, or, or is it's actually upside down. That you pay a hundred and five to make a hundred. So which we're actually making. We're paying a hundred to make two hundred and ten. But because I'm giving my team fifty fifty, I mean these aren't leads going to me. These are leads to go to my team. And once right. you're done with the split, you're not you're not making very much money. Right, and then you got overhead and everything else. So, wow. um, all right. So what are you doing? Um, yourself now like what's your life look like now that you went from this crazy solo agent doing all these deals um to someone who's built a team uh it's going good i mean it's still super stressful so i was just actually talking to a loan officer um about 10 minutes ago before i jumped on the call and you know is it worth it you hear you know this team more ego than anything um you know, would I rather just be a solo agent and just freaking really crush it and just like hammer it out? Because if the market shifts and I have all this overhead, what the hell do I do? You know, if it's I a got great, contracts it's a great with Zillow, what? yeah, if I got contracts with Zillow and Realtor.com, I mean, do I just move to Mexico? Mexico is 10 miles away. Maybe I'll just leave, <laughs> cancel my credit cards and what? bounce from real estate. Well, when you like, what, what's the length of these contracts you're signing? Six months. So I will never sign another contract. So that's one thing I learned is you can really be a hard ass with them and not make, not let them say, I'll do it, but I'm not going to sign. Um, I wouldn't sign any contracts. That's a lesson learned. I haven't had anything bad happen, but definitely I need to be able to have that. Like if something's not going great for maybe three months in a row that I could just be like, all right, I got to call it quits on this, you know, astronomical spend. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And, and when the market, when I had a big team, I, I had a, um, $22,000 a month rent. And then I had a, a print. I talk about this in my book and I had a printer that was like f f something ridiculous amount, several thousand dollars. Cause it, cause we were printing so many postcards. Um, and, um, and both of those I couldn't get out of, you know? And, uh, wow. and I, and w once, once those ended, I stuck it out until 2010 um, but those two years between two, two, 2008 and 2010, they really sucked. I hated them because, I mean, I was counting down the days when that lease was over. Um, and, and that day, I swore I would, like you, never sign anything long term because the market will shift. 
I don't yeah. think you got. I don't think you, six months is not going to kill you, but it it could ruin your profit for a year, sure. Um, but I mean, it's solo agent. I could bounce through it and be totally fine. But right. With the team, you know, right now I'm giving my team some of the some of the agent or some of the referrals that come to me. I'm just too busy to handle them, so I just hand them to my team. I mean, in time, if I were just doing my own thing and not having to do agendas and team meetings and trainings, I could take all the clients in the world. Running around with clients is easy. Um, I think you get burnt out, and so I think that's why you do the team, and then I think you get burnt out from the team, so then you're like, man, I should go back to the good old life. Yeah, you're just, you're just changing the stress. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I, I got a buddy that's a, that owns a huge company, and he goes, man, some days I wish I was just – you know, 16 again, riding my bike to the sub shop, making subs, um, <laughs> you know, and uh, I understand that stress. Uh, but at the same level, you know, in reality, he would hate doing that after a while working for a boss. And, you know, yeah. and I think the same thing with a team is um, it is a lot of fun. I, I find some people, a lot of people find that teams have more fun. I mean, it's more of a party, right? And it's more of a, you're helping other people grow and you're, you're doing things together and, and you have common goals and that, that's fun. It's like playing football by yourself or playing football on a team, right? It's funner. Yeah. Um, and of course, there's ego involved, uh, you know, um, but, but, you know, certainly there's agents out there that will tell you and, and, and a lot of it's true. And we, we've had them all on the show too, that the, you know, the profit margin could be a lot better if you just, like you said, just worked all the deals yourself. And then, you know, everything under a certain price range, you just refer out for a 25 to 50% referral fee to a random who's not on your quote unquote team. I mean, I talked yeah. to a guy recently who did uh, 40 million in volume, but 25 of it, he just referred out. Cause he didn't want to do it. You know, um, and he only took 15 million himself, like the, the top of the top. So, so it's interesting, but, um, you know, I think that there is, you know, at 400,000, I mean, there, there's plenty of people out there with teams that are making, you know, big bucks and, and your goal might be to take it to uh, at least one year where you make over a million dollars net and be like, at least I rang the bell, you know? That's probably what my biggest goal is. Right now, it says I'll make a uh, net 587. Um, right. So you're not too far off. And no. the chances are the, the market has enough legs that you left in it that you could still, you know, if you're cranking out and you keep cranking out. Dude, our you know. team's cranking. Like we closed seven this week. So we've only done, you know, 106 or 105 all year, but we're, our numbers are definitely heavier on this end of the year than they were at the beginning. You know, new team. So, so like, what's your day look like, like now? What do you, what are you doing with your time? Uh, I was waking up doing the five a.m. call and and doing that whole thing, but I kind of got burnt out. So now I'm doing five a.m. Uh, what five a.m. call? Yeah, it's a it's a five a.m. huddle for five minutes, and basically it's just kind of an inspirational five minutes. And I did like that for something that you sign up for or something. No, no, no. I mean, you, you're you can be part of it, but you're calling in at your own time. Like meaning you, you just jump on the phone call. There's no one there to hold you accountable, but you do jump on the phone call and it was, but now I started probably getting up more up about six and getting to my office around seven thirty, and kind of just prepping for my own stuff. I try to keep track, but I mean, a lot of it, I've been going to a lot of conferences because most of my business, if not all is referral. So it's either past clients or referral for my own personal business. And that comes a lot from conferences and speaking at events. So like, in the last week, I've been to Huntington Beach, Palm Springs. I'm going to Boston on Friday, um, Paso Robles. So, like, there's one trip after another for – So, wait a minute. So, referrals from what? Other agents? Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. So, you're going to conferences and then you're speaking. Yes. Right? On, on how to build – how to sell real estate or look at me, right? And then are you getting paid for these conferences or are you doing it only for a referral business? Uh, no, sometimes it'll be like a free conference, which I normally would go to anyway. So it's, you know, 600 bucks, $700 off free hotel and then free flight. So it just right. depends. Yep. Um, sometimes I'm just going to go to network. And that's the same thing, right? Cause th those are fun, right? We get high from traveling places, seeing new places, 
um, meeting people. We get energy from that. Um, you know, of course, you got to be careful because too much of that, and it's like, well, you got to you know, go home to the houses, <laughs> right? Yeah, you got to go back to work. Um, so, are you doing any appointments yourself? Yeah, no, definitely. I just came from an appointment, and I'm going to an appointment right after this. So, so, so what kind of appointment? You doing listings, buyers, both? What? I do both. So, because I'm a newer agent, and I'm not—I don't know if you're familiar with this profile. I'm not yeah, a high. Sure, D. absolutely. So I'm a I'm a lower D. So actually, listing wise, I don't know if it's because of my lack of experience with listings and the fact that I came up as a buyer's agent, um, or if I'm just really good with getting buyers to trust me that they usually buy a home within the first five homes that we've look at. Uh, I, I really am adamant about showing them all the houses online first and then we'll go and hit the car, but I'll let them know like, hey, most of my clients buy a house within the first five because we narrow it down that well. I won't show anyone a house without a pre-approval letter and I don't sell anything. My, my price point, I don't want to show anything under 700. So really when I'm showing a house, if I'm showing them quite a few homes and it's you know more than 700,000 and I'm representing a buyer and I'm buddies with all the listing agents in San Diego, so my offers get accepted. It's not a bad gig working buyers because most of the people who are working buyers suck because all the good agents want to do listings. Right. So, so basically you get a, a referral of somebody uh, for 500,000 or whatever, and that goes to one of your buyer agents, obviously, right? Yep. Yeah. And then, and then when you give them a direct referral like that, um, you know, what's a commission split to them? I should do something different, but I keep everything 50, 50. So okay. I know a lot of other teams will do less. But, but you're still getting half and, and you can pick and choose who you give it to. Yep. Um, and I mean, like I said, like it's, it's kind of cool seeing these people. Like I have an agent on my team. She freaking bought her first house this year, $750,000 home. She bought a freaking brand new car. She's been to Hawaii, Tel Aviv, New York, Palm Springs, like all these vacations this year. And she's going to make 250 grand. Like, I think that's freaking cool shit. Like, yeah, that's the fun part, right? That's, yeah. that's the joy you get from a team. I don't need that extra 5% commission and say, tell someone, oh, 45 or 40% you because it was my referral to you as a layup. It's kind of like, hey, you've been kicking ass. Here's a layup because you work your ass on every other one. Right. And they know it. So, they know it too when you give them a layup because you're the yeah. special person, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, um, all right. So, yeah, and I don't mind doing that. I think it's, uh -oh. yeah. your work, what? So, so what's your yep. team look like today? Like what, describe it. Yeah. So we have, um, low support staff, which I would want more, but obviously overhead, I don't want to kill it. So I have one admin TC. So he does all of our transactions and then he does all the onboarding. I just hired a recruiter who's going to be recruiting full time. I pay them a base pay plus bonus. And then we have six agents who are in production, six brand new agents that have had their license less than probably four months. And then I have more or less three or four that just came on the team within the last couple of weeks. And, so and where, where are you getting all these new agents? Uh, Wise Hire is a big one. And then open houses and people come to me because they notice my name in the, in the, in the area. And, and so Wise Hire, they've been on the show and, um, so they, but they, don't they just um, tell you whether to hire them or not, or do they find them for you too? Yeah. So it's job posting. So they, you'll post a job out and wise hire will syndicate it with Craigslist and indeed and monster and all the different sites. So you get all the applicants aggregated into one website, easy to use, tells you excellent, poor, good, however they rate them. And I would suggest going through all of them and making sure even the poor ones that say it's not a good candidate, call them and see why, you know, um, it tells them their disc profile, has them rank it on that as well. And then we can go in and then I do a class every Friday from 12 to one. And instead of setting up interviews with each agent, we just invite them to the class. And so if you come, that may show that you're a little bit more interested. Um, and if you don't, you know, who cares? So we reach out to these people instead of doing interviews with them and taking our time to kind of set it up. We do a class. And from there we start chatting with everyone and we kind of see who would be a culture fit. And then we pull them from that class. And, and, and these aren't even, they, a lot of them don't even have their license yet, right? It's, it's yeah. thought about a career in real estate, so, that sort of thing? Yeah. And in Southern California, it takes six months to get your license. So it is a process. It's a long-term follow-up game. So you, we got to make sure that we keep in touch with these people. I know. It takes six months. So it's, it could take possibly about four, but with the state being backed up all the time, I've never seen anyone get their license that fast. And so, hopefully uh, we're trying to get people that are licensed already. 
So, so it's fascinating that your, your admin is so low. Like, like, I guess the agents do everything, huh? Uh, yeah. I mean, once it gets into contract though, the admin does take over. We just have it super streamlined. So we have it set up to where you go on a listing appointment, you're bringing the disclosures as the listing agent, you're going to have everything filled out. And then you're going to have three days later an expectations meeting. So between day one and day three, after you get the listing sign, the admin goes into place and gets the photography scheduled, gets the sign in the yard, gets everything done, gets the Zillow coming soon. Cause on the listing appointment, which is what I'll share with the group, it'll be my little freebie is uh, my giveaway. It's basically a listing intake form. So we have everything from the Zillow coming soon to the timelines of when the sign can be in the yard, when the flyers can be there, when the cleaner's going to be there, when the photos are going to be done, all of that stuff. And it's all on a timeline for the admin. So they just go in and put it into a calendar and it really it just takes care of itself. You know, they do all the calls that day one. It's all set up. They do the introductory call to the client saying, hey, congrats for listing with Porchlight, my team. And uh, we're going to take it from there. Brandon's going to go back over on Thursday for the expectations meeting, go over about how the process works when you're selling your home, all the ifs, do's, don'ts, all that good stuff. And then it eliminates phone calls and eliminates expectations and angry people. What do you think about the word toolbox? What is a toolbox? A toolbox is a box full of tools that you use to build something great. At Real Estate Rockstars, we've created our own free toolbox. So everybody that comes on the show as a guest brings a tool with them and we plow them all into this toolbox and we give it away for our viewing audience to basically use as they wish. Everything we put in there is an actionable item that can be downloaded, can be printed, can be used immediately. And we got things like scripts and dialogues, checklists for teams, checklists to keep agents accountable, referral forms that are filled out at settlement to get referrals by your buyers and sellers. Everything you can think of that you could use on a regular basis about real estate is included in this toolbox and it's helping agents worldwide sell more houses and make their jobs a lot easier and processes much more efficient and the thing is it's absolutely free all you got to do is go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999 that's toolbox 444-999 do it now Right, and but but the uh, dealing with the contracts and the the inspections and the appraisals and all that stuff is is the agent doing that? I imagine with all those deals, it's probably difficult for a one admin to handle all that, right? Yeah, the uh, well, the agent um, gets the phone call for the appraisal. In our city, the listing is the listing agent does the appraisal, and that's it. Um, so in reality, it's pretty damn simple. I mean, it goes back to negotiating. I think a lot of the times it's, uh, we spend on request for repairs. So my, my person who's doing the record the recruiting, I'm actually going to have him also start doing listing coordinator. So he's going to take it all the way from getting the listing to closing. So if they get a request for repairs and they, you know, this has to be done, this light bulb, this plumbing thing has to be taken care of. The listing coordinator is going to take care of that for the agent. Right. That's a big long time and, time. and it's going to give the agent more time. You should probably charge five hundred dollars a transaction or something for. We do, you know, for them. Once yep. you add that, you know, or something. But yep, interesting. We do. We have that already in place for our. It goes to our our TC. It's a four fifty fee from the from the agent. So what what kind of uh, cool phone apps uh, or or software are you using that you're excited about? Um, I would say. Um, my, my CRM has a really cool software that we call all the things through. Um, I wouldn't say anything. I would say everything's pretty standard. Home snap is something I use every day. Let's see what other real estate ones, uh, mortgage guy for my mortgage calculator. Okay. Wait a minute. So, so home snap, how do you use home snap? Home snap is just our, uh, our MLS. So I think it's everywhere, but if you just need to look at homes, um, it makes it really easy to kind of view the houses and comps. Yeah, I do that for my listing. So if, instead of looking at the comps before I've even walked in the house, I'll just open up HomeSnap and be like, well, that house down the street sold on this date. And they're like, oh yeah, it sold for 800. And you're like, no, it actually sold for 725. They listed it at 800, <laughs> but it sold for 725. And you'll look through the photos with them right then and there on your right. iPad. And then how does our home compare to this one? Uh, a little bit less. Okay, well, that was 725. 
And in their mind, they thought of it as 800. So HomeSnap allows me to do that on the fly versus printing out MLS sheets, which you can't. Right, right. Or, or standing there like you, you, you don't know, right? And yeah. here you could prove it right there. What about Mortgage Guy? I never heard of that one. So tell me about uh, that. Mortgage Guy is just a, a friend of mine told me about it and just said, hey, I said, which loan calculator do you use that's decent and accurate? And Mortgage Guy is one of the best um, that they used. And so I just started, started copying them. And they have a, it's just a mortgage calculator and rates and everything in there. Simple. So how, how is your listing agent, right? Or, or, or your, uh, yeah, your listing agent or yourself. Cause you how long have you been in the business? I've been in, in uh, three and a half years. So three and a half years, right? And so when you first started or even now um, and, uh, and, and your listing agent who's just starting out, um, how do you beat an agent that's been in the business a long time and is, is, has a ton of business? What, what's the technique so people listening can learn? Print all of their expireds and cancellations. Okay. So, hey, this is, this is, I haven't heard this. This is quite ballsy, um, but is, is great advice. I mean, uh, I mean, so tell me about this. So I have a, I have a $2.2 million listing right now. And the way I got it is it actually, they actually expired from the number one team three years ago in this market, they, this team dominates. And so I went through and I printed all the cancellations that expired. Well, they've been an agent for like 15 years or something. So they had a lot of cancellations expired. And I did it not front and back because you want the, the paces, you want it to be a thicker book. <laughs> so you print all of them off. And I said, well, if you want to just list your home and put it on the market again, list with them, here's all their cancellations and expired. But if you want to sell your home, list with me. And they picked me, which I was actually shocked. I've never listed a home over $2 million before. And I got the listing. And it was you based could, off you them probably, having the cancellations they have. And you could probably even highlight the, like 2018, 2000, highlight the year. Let them know. Like, this isn't, this isn't 10 years of data. <laughs> you know, yeah, this is a lot of shit. Well, this some is of the it, last 12 months. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of the times listing agents will take listings just to take them to get signs in the yard, especially in a neighborhood that they dominate. And so pay attention to those stats. And like I said, you're, you're looking at those sellers that think the home's worth 800 or the, the neighbor's home sold for 800. Well, it actually sold for 725 after freaking four price reductions. You know, do you want, do you want your home to sit on the market for six months because you overprice it? Or look at my stats. We can go a little bit faster, price it right. Um, you know, they're still going to be in control, but you can at least guide them in the right way. And um, so... so obviously, right, you got to ask uh, before you get out there, who else are you talking to, right? I mean, you knew that this mega team was going out there, right? Yeah. Yeah, I knew that they were, I asked them on the phone, okay, and, and who am I competing against? In Southern California, you're always competing against someone. So, of course, you get a few come list me's, um, but even with the come list me, which was a referral, I'm in escrow in right now, they actually called me and said, hey, uh, we decided to go with someone else, so we're going to cancel our meeting tomorrow. And I said, oh, uh, who are you going with? And they told me the company name and it was a, a discount brokerage. And I said, hey, let me know what you think of them. I've never lost a listing to those people, but I've heard is that you pay whether your home sells or not. Let me know. And I didn't hear back. And then the next day he freaking calls me up and was like, hey, we're going to go with you. So he actually ended up listing uh, his house with me. What the reason being was is that he had wrote that company an email and he didn't hear back for 24 hours. And he thought that that was the wrong way to start off. So because they are a discount brokerage, they're about the masses. So he, the, their agent didn't follow up with them, and I ended up getting the listing either way, even though I was told, hey, I'm not going to go with you, Mark. I'm going to go with someone else. So just know and always ask who you're going against. When they say they're going with someone else, still keep in contact with them, at least just like, you know, like, not still be that guy to be the resource. Right, and a lot of it probably had to do with the fact that you probably responded in, in like seconds flat, right? So you, you, you almost spoiled them, right, to the point and then this other company, you know, takes 24 hours or more and they're like, well, compared to Mark, these guys suck, you know? Yeah, and one thing that I, the reason why my response time is so damn quick is anytime a client emails me through my CRM, so if they email my email, it pings my phone. So it tells me, hey, Richard emailed you 
So I know on my cell phone in a, in a text message. So then all I have to do is just open up the email and respond back. So every time a client emails me, I'm on it. And can you set that up to, to, for just certain people? Um, yeah, you probably could, but mine's on everyone that mine's on every client, every client. But like what I'm saying is if you get a spam, does it? No, no, no. It's just, it's just clients. Yeah. Just clients. Yeah. Just clients. So not every email that comes in pings me. It's just clients that email me. And how do you know that they're a client and not a spammer? Cause they're in my FirePoint. Well, I mean, they could be, they could be a, a shit lead. But I mean, leads that are coming into me, if, if it's come into my CRM and it's in my CRM, it's going to ping me when they write me back. I got you. So it does yeah. kind of filter it through FirePoint, right? Yep. Right. Okay. So that's the answer to the question. FirePoint filters the spam essentially, right? In, in not directly, but indirectly, because you know, if, you, if you have a listing appointment and you put them in there as a lead, it's going to your phone. Yep. Yeah. So it lets you know that that client's messaging you. So the seconds my, my clients message me, I'm freaking responding back immediately. That's amazing. What would you say the one less, what, what's one thing you've done wrong in building this team, right? Going from solo agent to team um, that you learned already. A million things. If you have a bad feeling about someone, let them go. So, you know, what does that mean? I mean, it's kind of ambiguous. So if you have a, I mean, I think everyone has kind of a gut instinct about individuals. And if you're thinking about the dollar and you're not thinking about the team culture or you're thinking that someone might be a good fit and you're too nervous to let them go, I would just say, just let them go. It'll do you more harm long run than you'll ever get good out of it. Um, I haven't had horrible like anti-culture fit or like anything that's gone crazy wrong, but I've just had like a few hires where they definitely were not the right fit and I knew early on and I let it go too long. So I guess the key is don't be afraid to fire people, right? Don't be afraid to let people, because a lot of people are like, oh man, I got all this, I got weeks of training in and I, you know what I mean? I got to start all over and you know what I mean? Like, like you know, I got hire so much invested. Fire. Yep. Higher, slow, fire, fast. Higher, slow, fire, fast. I love that. I love that. That's good stuff. And, and what does it cost for you to put all those ads and do all that stuff with wise agent? Uh, wise hire. Wise hire is, wise uh, hire. sorry, no worries. Uh, 200 bucks a month. Yeah. That, I mean, that's a great deal. Right. And that, and that's why wouldn't you, right? If you're trying to build a team, why wouldn't you use that system? For sure. I canceled it once and my coach was like, why the fuck would you cancel it? It's only $200 a month. I'm like, yeah, because my expenses are going through the roof. I don't want it. He goes, Mark, if you get one agent a year out of it, it's worth it. And I'm like, you're right. <laughs> right. And now you got all these, right? You got all these up yeah. and comers. For sure. Yeah. And it's, I mean, of the up and comers, like who knows who will make it? You never know who has that grit and grind and the reason why is big enough. Some people surely impress you. Some people let you down. Yeah. And it's not like you're going to lose a bunch of leads to them because you got the quadrant. So, you yep. know, you know that the good leads aren't being wasted by a brand new agent. For sure. I love that. I love that stuff. Okay, cool. Well, listen, Mark, this has been a blast, buddy. So um, what, um, as you know, everybody that comes on the show brings a free gift. And yep. uh, what we do is I'm going to put that in your show notes. Um, and uh, uh, I think that your first one was simply uh, Mark Pattison one. So it was uh, hybendigital.com. Mark Pattison is spelled P-A-T-T-I-S-O-N, P-A-T-T-I-S-O-N. And I'm going to say hybendigital.com, Mark Pattison, the number two, hybendigital.com backslash Mark Pattison, the number two. And I'm also going to put it in the agent success toolbox, but with it in Mark's show notes, I'm going to put all of Mark's contact information because he gets a lot of referrals from agents and he wants a referral from you too. So what, uh, what'd just, you bring with you? I just got a referral. <laughs> I just got a referral in my text as we're talking. Is that right from another agent? Yeah. He goes, how familiar are you with Mission Bay? And I said, very. He goes, great. I have a doctor referral for you. And this is somebody you met at a conference. Yeah. He's an agent in New York City. What, so what conferences do you go to? Uh, Tom Ferry, I'll go to, um, I'll go to, it's kind of random. So I was at the Zillow one last week, um, going to Tom Ferry in Boston next week. So Tom Ferry, Zillow. Yep. Do you go to Inman or do you go to, I've never been to Inman or any of that. 
Yeah. I've met Brad a few times. I was with Brad in Palm Springs last week. But uh, I've never been to one of his conferences. I've seen him speak times. So. All right, beautiful. Well, beautiful. Um, okay, cool. So anyways, let's get back to your free gift. Yes. Um, so I'm, I was going to do my listing process. So anytime I have a listing, we go through a very streamlined process and it helps us out. So it's one system that definitely I think that whenever I share it with people, they're impressed. Has seller homework in there. So anytime that seller needs to know any of their pro, uh, pricing for cable, pricing for trash, all that stuff, if you ever get those questions, you have it in their file. So you don't have to reach out to your seller for stupid questions. That's awesome. That's awesome, yeah. guys. So I'm going to take that PDF. I'm going to put it up there in your show notes. I'm also going to put it on hybendigital.com backslash toolbox, or you can text the word toolbox to 444-999. Uh, Mark, this has been brilliant, buddy. Uh, if I'm ever in San Diego, I will definitely um, drop by. We can uh, go to a high rise there and have lunch on the rooftop or something because right now Mark's looking at this brilliant high rise uh, building and l looking at some cool things behind him. So I want to do that too in San Diego. So I will definitely look you up. We get together and break some bread. Sounds good, man. Thanks for having me on the show again. All right, buddy. Thank you so much for tuning in to Real Estate Rockstars. If this free content is giving you a ton of value, I want to ask a small favor in return. I need you to pull out your pointing finger and hit the subscribe button yes hit subscribe please the more subscribers that we get on real estate rock stars the better guests are attracted to the shows we'll get more guests from the top companies from the top teams and even more celebrity guests like robert kiyosaki and barbara corcoran also if you're not a member of our free facebook group Go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio right on Facebook and join the conversation. I'm on there myself on FaceTime Lives, and we have a lot of communications and questions about the show, and I'd love to see you there. And it's free. People ask me all the time, where am I on social media? I'm real easy to find. Just type in my name. My IG is I am Pat Hyben. It is blowing up on Instagram, adding tons of subscribers. And I'm on there probably twice a day. So definitely follow me on Instagram as well as everywhere else. Thanks again for listening and keep rocking.